What's up, everybody? How y'all doing tonight? I said, how y'all doing tonight? All right. How was everybody's activities this afternoon? Did you have fun? Now, I got to tell y'all, I did not realize or recognize how nice this campground is. Like, it is incredibly beautiful. Last week, uh, we actually walked around during free time and looked at some of the cabins. And y'all, I had no idea. Some of you are staying in the life of luxury here. Like the cabins are huge. There were all these little crevices that you could climb up in and hide away. And beds that had, there were like lofted beds with these nice dressers next to you. It was crazy. So I don't know if you're in one of those cabins, but uh, the cabins were incredible. I was blown away at how nice some of them were. Okay, so... Um, be honest, I know how, obs how observant y'all really are. How many of you at dinner, like, you didn't even recognize me because I didn't have my hat on? Okay, okay. maybe a couple of you. You're like, yo, who's this dude? I don't know who that is. Uh, where's the crew that I played basketball with today? We played a game of basketball. Okay, yep, there we go. All right. Uh, what about my nine square people? Yeah, yeah there they are. Y'all were out there for like four hours. But let's see if you guys will, will get this. Say it with me wherever Barrett is. Ring that bell. Yeah, so I don't know what that was about, but 30 times in the middle of nine square. Yeah, we would take, <laughs> he would take the ball, ring the bell, and we would say that, and it, it was hilarious. I still don't really know what happened there. Um, but uh, I hope, also, I don't know what Team Lane is, <laughs> but they're really excited about it. So I don't know. You'll have to ask them, the people that cheered really loud for that. So you'll, you can talk to them after. This may be a lesson in just don't put random pins on you if you don't know what they are, but I did it. So don't uh, learn from my example. Know what you're supporting, I suppose. But Team Lane, there you go. Awesome. Well, I hope you all had a, fan, a fantastic day. Uh, I had a great, great day as well. I maybe tried to play a little bit too much, but um, it's been a great day to just come, uh, really a great weekend to come and unplug for a little bit. How many of you have enjoyed that, to just come, kind of slow down a little bit, be outside, have some fun, and be reminded that life isn't as stressful as we might make it? seem at some times. I know I definitely needed that. And so all weekend we have been talking about identity. And so first we talked about how God has chosen us, each and every one of us. God has given us value. God has called us his people. And then this morning we talked about how God changes us, but it's going to take a little bit of time. So don't get discouraged. Keep going. Uh, that God is holy. And maybe that's a word that you haven't really heard of before, but God is holy, and we also will become holy as God changes us. And then tonight, we're going to talk about how God calls us. So God calls us. Everybody say, God calls us. Awesome. So let's look back at 1 Peter tonight. Again, if you don't know, I, I didn't really explain this because I was waiting till tonight, but... 1 Peter is a book written by a man named Peter who uh, will actually talk about his life tomorrow morning because I think it fits really well with the idea of being chosen. But Peter is writing this book to a group of people. It's a letter. He's writing it to a group of people not too different than what I think y'all are going through right now, what y'all are going through today back home. And this group is a group of young, new believers. They might not necessarily be young in age, like y'all are, but young in practice. They've just started following Jesus, and Peter is reminding them of their identity in Christ, who they are in Jesus, the good news of who Jesus was, that Jesus was God in flesh, that he came to the earth, died, and rose again, and now what that means to be someone who follows Jesus a Christian. 
And so Peter is writing to help them find their identity in Jesus and not in the world. And so, again, in 1 Peter 2.9, this is the verse that he's echoing out of our main uh, passage from Deuteronomy. That's our theme verse for the weekend, that you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. So as a result of being chosen by God, we get to be a people who become changed by God so that we can show others the goodness of God. Because we've been called. We've been called out of darkness into God's wonderful light. You are called by God himself out of darkness to show others God's goodness so that you can make known to others who God truly is. That just as you have been chosen, that just as God has made you a new creation and is changing your life, that is God is changing you from the inside out, that as Jesus loves you and cares for you so much that Jesus is going to teach you a better way to live, a way to live that's so different from the world, a way to live that knows that you have value, a way to live that displays that you have identity and value in Christ and good news to a world of people who are constantly searching for value and identity. Everywhere we look, people are constantly searching for value and identity. And so we are called by God to show others God's goodness. Peter actually puts it this way. In chapter 3, in a beautiful passage of scripture that, that shares what I believe can be the fullness of what Christian living can look like and what it should look like. Peter writes this, finally, all of you should be of one mind, meaning you, you, you're all united together, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tender hearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, why don't you pay them back with a blessing? That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. For the scriptures say, and he quotes from Psalms here, if you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. You see, God has chosen us and called us out of the darkness so that we can point others to Jesus in every possible way that we can. In each and every moment of our day, we get to point others to the goodness of God, to the kindness of Jesus Christ. I mean, listen to the language that Peter writes in this. It sounds like a community that I don't know about y'all, but I want to be a part of, right? Like, listen to this. Love each other as brothers and sisters. Be tenderhearted. Keep a humble attitude. Don't refuse pay evil for evil, retaliate insults with blessing, right? Like, keep away from evil, keep from telling lies, work for peace and search for it, work to maintain it. Like, doesn't that sound like a community y'all would want to be a part of? I know it does for me. And see, we can see that God has chosen us and called us out of the darkness so that we can point people to Jesus. And the way that I think is uh, an easy way to understand this, uh, the best way that I could think of and imagine is that we are all like little flashlights, okay? All over the world, in our teams, in our schools, and all of the things that we're involved in, we're, we get to use our talents and our gifts to lead others in the kindness of Christ. And so God uses us like flashlights. God calls us out of the darkness into God's glorious light. And so it starts like this, right? So we come to places like this, 
and we get encouraged and we're surrounded by others and our, our batteries are kind of recharged, so to speak, and we get around a group of other people that we're all flashlights and the light's real bright and we're reminded of who we are, our identity in Christ, that God has chosen us and we're encouraged by one another and we're recharged. So we learn and remind ourselves of our true identity and then we continue to grow and mature in our faith. But then there is a second calling. You see, then we are to go out with the light of Jesus. You see, if you're always surrounded in moments like this, in events like this, if you're always surrounded by other flashlights, you're actually not fully living into the purpose that God has called you into. And so, where does a flashlight work the best? In the dark. Like right now, I can shine my light all around here, and you can kind of see it, right? Like, you can see that. It's like, yeah, it's, it's there, but it's not, like, super bright. Why? Because I'm in a room full of light. If you could, turn off the lights for me. So, where does a flashlight work best? In the dark, right? You see, we get the opportunity to be light in the darkness. Do you notice how much brighter my light is now? Do you notice this, right? Like, it's pretty obvious. Like, if I had to do this, all of you are like, ah, my eyes! Ah, my eyes! Right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, here, stay with me. Come back. I know I just pointed this in your eyes, and so some of y'all are like, oh, I can't see anything. But here's the deal. You see, God has called us out of the darkness. He fills us with his glorious light so that then we can carry God's light with us wherever we go. But oftentimes what happens is we come to these events, we get encouraged, we get our batteries recharged, and then we get home and we think, ah, oh, you know what? I just don't know if I want to be that bright. So we turn our light off. And so we begin to hide our lights. We begin to merge with other people in our lives like, ah, oh, you know, I'm just going to try and be like them. I don't know about being the bright light that God has given me in this world. And you see, the sad thing about this is that it misses our true purpose, that God has given us great light so that we can be a beacon to those who are running around the world searching for purpose, who are searching for identity, and then all of a sudden, they're going to be able to see the flashlights, they're going to be able to see the people called the Christians, and they're going to be able to tell because of how we are different, that man, I want to be like that. You can turn the lights back on for me. Because you see, here's the crazy part. The more, as we talked about this morning, the more we give Jesus time, the more Jesus changes us from the inside out. And what begins to happen is all of a sudden, you want to take the light of Christ with you wherever you go, and it becomes unstoppable. What happened when I turned on my light in the darkness? It got brighter, right? The darkness got brighter, and that is what happens when we choose to be the light of Christ. The more we give Jesus time, the more he changes us. And then you can't help but love others in, the similar, in a similar way. You're reminded of how God has chosen you, and then you can't help but go out and choose others to show them that, hey, you have purpose, you have value, you are created in the identity of Christ. So then what happens is people who are in darkness through you and Christ within you, they start to see God's goodness in remarkable ways. They start to turn to you for wisdom. They start to turn to you to hear how God values them. They start to turn to you for a completely different way of living life that provides value and purpose. Because light always overcomes the darkness. You see, when we go into dark places and we're reminded that God has called us out of the darkness into marvelous light, all of a sudden, it's like, wow, 
They treat everyone the same way. Wow. They care about others more than they care about themselves. Wow. They noticed today when I was hurting. Wow, that, that person who I know is a Christian, they noticed today that I was hurting and they took time to stop and listen to me. They didn't just walk away. They didn't just blow me off. They stopped and listened and even prayed for me. Wow. Wow, the Christians, even though I disagree with them, they still consider me a friend even though we disagree. Wow, when I really messed up my life, the Christians, they didn't walk away from me. They actually walked closer to me. They got more involved in my life. They encouraged me and they supported me. Wow. You see, this is what the life of Jesus can do to us changes our lives where we go into the darkness and we're pointing to God's goodness all of the time no matter what we show them that they too have so much value see what an incredible purpose God gives to us that no matter what, no matter what their biggest blunder is, God still loves them in all of his goodness. And we get to show others that goodness. The next thing is that we are called by name. Say, I'm called by name. Come on, say it like you mean it. I'm called by name. All right. So the word Peter uses here in the Greek language, it actually it literally translates to call one by name, meaning God calls each and every one of us by name. And so what I want you guys to understand is that we have a general calling. We are called out of the darkness into God's marvelous light so that we can show others the light of Christ, so that we can show others God's goodness, but we also have a specific calling. Did you know that all of you are unique? You are all individuals specific to exactly who you are. Like all of you in here are different than me, right? Like all of you in here, you're different than your neighbor. You have certain gifts. You have certain talents that you can use to show others God's goodness. You see, some of you, you'll grow up to be nurses or doctors or lawyers. Some of you, you'll grow up to be Maybe professional athletes, I don't know. Some of you, you'll grow up to be teachers. Some of you, you'll grow up to be mechanics or electricians. Some of you, you'll grow up, I don't know what it might be. You see, but each of you have specific talents, have specific purposes in your life that then you can use in really practical ways to show others God's goodness, even right now. Right now, all of you are so different. And you're continuing to walk through your life trying to be like everybody else. You're trying to be exactly like the person next to you. You're just trying to fit in and just kind of play the scene, make sure that you, you, you look just like everyone else. And it's a shame because God has called you to be unique. God has called you to be who you are right now so that you can use your gifts, your talents to show others God's goodness. You see, we're all uniquely different to help others see the goodness of God. And so we are called out of darkness into God's glorious light so that we can help others see the goodness of God. Tonight, we get the opportunity to share in communion with one another. And then we're going to walk around this room and have some reflection time, some prayer stations and different activities to do to help you process what you've been learning this weekend. But in the midst of all that, I just want to encourage you tonight to take some time to pray with the Lord, talk to Jesus, and begin to ask Jesus, God, show me right now how I can use the gifts you've given me to show others your goodness. Simple prayer. God, show me the gifts I have right now. Show me the gifts that I can use to help show others the goodness of God. Will you pray with me tonight? Jesus, we're grateful for your light. We're grateful that you've called us out of darkness into your glorious light. 
Lord, I pray that you would help us to be like flashlights in this world, that we would be beacons of hope to the people around us as we show that they have value and purpose and identity in you. Just as you have chosen us, we get to go out and help others see that they are chosen as well. You've called us for such great purpose. So Lord, help us to step into that in your strength and in your strength alone. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen, amen. Well, tonight, don't go anywhere. Tonight we get the opportunity to share in communion, and I just want to welcome up Jeremy with us. He's going to lead us through communion, and so if you could welcome him up tonight. We're so thankful for him. Hey guys, can you hear me okay? A lot has happened in the 45 minutes since you first got your instructions. So let's take a moment before we celebrate communion together to go over them again. We're going to talk about what communion is for a few minutes. We're going to say a prayer and bless our elements and those. And then you're going to get dismissed by rows and you're going to go out up to the prayer stations. And then when you're done there, you'll come down and we'll have two stations for you on either side and a gluten-free station in the middle. We're going to take communion by a method called intinction which means someone's going to give you a piece of bread and then you'll dip it in the cup and you'll have it together. Okay? So why do we do that? Why do we celebrate communion? It's one of these beautiful things in our Christian tradition and it goes back to Jesus and his last night here on earth. He was having a meal with his best friends in the world, his disciples, and they were sharing a meal together for the last time. And Jesus knew what was coming and what was going to happen. And he knew that they were going to need some reminders of how he felt about them, of how he loved them. So he took some bread and he broke it and he gave it to them and he told them to take and eat. He didn't give them the bread because their life was together. In fact, they were going to spend the next three days, next month really, making what we call in our house poor choices. Peter was going to deny that he knew him. Judas was about to betray him. But God still loves him. God still chose them. And 2,000 years have gone by, but if we're honest, much like those disciples, my life's still a broken mess sometimes. I make poor choices. I do things and work and with my wife and I have a lot of conversations with my kids that I want back and much like them I'm a bit of a broken mess much like all of you I suspect we celebrate in communion we say that God finds us in the midst of our brokenness God loves us in the midst of our mess God's grace finds us in our broken mess and weaves us back together again. Jesus took a cup, and he blessed it, and he gave them, and told them to take and drink from this, that this was going to be him poured out for them. In my life, I would say that I've done a very good job of spilling my cup, of breaking it, of knocking it over, of completely emptying it out. Jesus came to earth, walked among us, lived, died, and rose again so that my cup, so that your cup, could be filled. We say that God chooses us before we are ever known or born, before we could ever even process. God's love and grace finds us in the midst of our lost and brokenness, chooses us, and helps make us whole again. Will you pray with me? God, we ask that you'll pour out your blessing on this, this bread and this cup, that they can be for us. Your love, your grace, the body of Christ, the blood of Christ, poured out for us. That we can receive this, we can receive your love and your grace, and they'll empower us to go out into the world to be that flashlight, to be that shining beacon for a world that needs to see your love. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, those who are going to help serve communion, come forward. And then we're going to let our ushers direct all of you. All of you guys keep your seats until the ushers direct you.